Now, we won't have to wait much longer for Harry and Meghan's documentary series, with Netflix confirming part one is going to be released this Thursday. Another trailer was released today with claims of a war against Meghan and Harry accusing the palace of playing a dirty game. It's really hard to look back on it now and go, what on earth happened? You hear that? That is the sound of hearts We know the full truth. Well, very, very dramatic. But speaking of the truth, the mm. documentary has already been criticised for showing misleading photographs. This week's trailer shows photographers not snapping the Sussexes, but actually covering Katie Price's court case. And last week's clip showed this image of press intrusion, but it was actually from a Harry Potter premiere before the couple even met. Now, meanwhile, the royal family insists it's business as usual, despite reports of crisis talks behind the scenes. And I think we can only imagine that if there aren't official crisis talks going on, there is a lot of concern. I mean, people close to Charles and William, or Charles and Camilla particularly, are saying, you know, they're, they're very weary. I mean, I bet that's a massive understatement. I'm weary just at the thought of it because we know how divisive this documentary is going to be. We've already seen it from the two trailers. It, it is clearly going to do a lot of damage to the royal family. I think some of the criticisms that have already come out about the validity of those photographs, to my mind, it's a bit of a red herring because those those trailers have been put together by publicity people, marketing people, wanting those pictures to be as dramatic as possible. I'm afraid I don't think it really matters that it was Katie Price's court case or that it was the Harry Potter premiere. They were there to illustrate. and. When this documentary series comes out, it's going to be all about what Harry and Meghan say. Mm. I'm not saying that everything they say is going to stand up or whether it is going to be tricky or not, but it is clearly going to be very divisive. But I just, I think this is a slight detail schmetel about mm. the, I the, the photographs. That. I think the point is it's meant to be a documentary. The trouble is Netflix have been making the crown for so long that they don't think actually <laughs> facts matter. But right? we don't know they that just... those photographs are going to be in the documentary. Well, it might just yeah, be the, in the trailer. Well, they're in the trailer, right? He also finishes the little trailer by saying nobody knows the truth. We know the truth. Oh, well, is it nobody or is it them? I mean, who knows the truth? The point is, is they're not being... Um, Clear, they're but not he's being saying truthful. you guys don't know the no, truth. No, well, he, yeah, but he didn't say that though, did he? He said it. He said it the wrong way round. I mean, he's an idiot, this bloke, right? And they're making stuff up, right? They're using footage which is not valid. They're misrepresenting journalists. They're saying that things happened which didn't happen. They're making out that they were chased in places where they weren't chased. There's one particular Robert Jobson tweet, who's a very well-respected royal correspondent, has written books with the royal family, knows loads of them, um, where they're saying there was press intrusion in a South African situation where they were outside of Archbishop Tutu's house and it was an agreed pool position which three people were allowed to go on. Robert Jobson says he was one of them. I think it just shows you the mindset of both Netflix and these two who are willing to say anything to make it sound awful. I mean, pictures of Meghan going like this, uh, and him going, oh. I mean, you know, it's all hammed up. It's all actually, you know, it's not actual footage of them doing anything. Look, at the end of the day, these are just trailers, right? Like Daisy said, we don't know if any of this footage is actually going to be in the documentary. And these, the, the documentary, you know, Megan has talked about how, how much distance they've had since it's been made from the directors, from the creative team, from the filmmakers. Doesn't look like it. If we have any problem with those shots being used, and actually if those shots being used and they're disingenuous, then we need to take that up with Netflix, we need to take up, that up with the production company and with the people who put that together. <clears throat> I actually think Harry and Megan would be disappointed to know that the shots in this documentary that are trying to represent something that's not even of them or nothing, anything mm. to do with them, well, I think I think that's actually you really might irresponsible yeah. of Netflix, the filmmakers and mm. the people who put that right. together. Okay. But also, just let me finish. Go on. This is Harry and Meghan's story. They are absolutely allowed to talk about themselves. Celebrities, and actually everyone does it all the time. Nobody knows you better than yourself. You know, why can't they put forward their side of well, the story? Thought, this is what I nothing, don't understand. Hang on, they've done nothing. Well, hang on, let me just point something out to you then. Problem with. Well, they have done nothing but put their side of the story. When they put their side of the story to Oprah Winfrey, if you remember, some of the headlines that were produced by Oprah Winfrey's team, and I'm sure you're going to tell me that these were also not anything to do with Harry and Meghan, they were headlines that weren't written, or they were headlines from 
from foreign newspapers that were published in parts of the country and parts of the world that had nothing to do with the British press or the American press. You know, they've got a track record of making stuff up. It's as simple I as that. I tell you one thing that did irritate me about what uh, Harry said in this trailer is mm. he said the royal family is a hierarchy. Uh, of course it's a hierarchy. It's, yeah, it's the epitome of a hierarchy. But that's the point. So just going back to your point, it's a trailer, right? It, it's a beautifully made trailer for a movie, not for a documentary. Yeah. And actually, I thought it was odious, self-serving, unedifying. Actually, it made me really angry because it was the juxtaposition, Daisy, of those sentences. So there is a hierarchy in the family, is what was said, and they rolled on, and you can hear the, the cut in between. There's, uh, there's leaking of stories and then planting of stories, like the two are intertwined. Well, they're not. They're different thoughts. They're different, uh, literally different comments. And I actually felt the whole thing... On a global stage, what worries me is that people will see that and think that Britain is a racist country, and that is not true. Well, David, I'd say that <clears throat> 70 of our MPs, our British elected MPs, who got together across parties and wrote a letter saying that the British press were racist, were misogynistic, and were writing headlines and stories about Meghan that had um, overtones of colonialism, that is enough for the for, for the rest of the world to think this country is racist. When I when I'm, I'm talking about wait, 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 wait. the electorate of yeah, this yeah, country, cool, cool. not okay, the no, newspapers. Well, well, great, but I'm saying to you, you're saying people are going to watch this and think something. I'm saying to you, if our own MPs are watching this and saying, yeah, actually, we've got we've got a problem with racism when it comes to Meghan Markle. Of the reporting. So their report actually said it was about the reporting from those newspaper journalists. They didn't and say they said it was there's about a, and they, the and, country. And in the, in the, in the trailer, Harry says there's a war on Meghan. And I don't know how there anyone... Isn't, I think, there isn't. I think there clearly there is. is. There Quite clearly there is. There is. From the second she, that she was introduced was as his girlfriend, maybe? it was a, a continuous attack. And, there, and of course, there was... It was not a continuous terms. attack. No. Yes, it was. Well, he says that something changed, right? Look, now, if they really didn't want her as part of the royal family, do you think that they would have let him marry her? I mean, do you actually believe that? Well, yeah, I think... Oh, so I, you I think, think that they I, wanted her to marry him I and think, then they I would destroy her? I think, her. unfortunately for the royal family, Harry has done whatever Harry wanted to do and they don't like it. And, mm. and this is why, when, when people were saying that there's racism from the royal family or there's racism from the British press, the royal family were silent. Why yeah. are 70 different MPs speaking up about it? I mean, why are 255 journalists and war cuts speaking about it? I don't know who exactly. people zero are. people in the royal family are going to say anything but, about but it. But actually, they don't say anything. But actually, JJ, in... They, they, they did, Kensington Palace did put out a statement when they were still girlfriend and boyfriend mm. saying that you know, the, the, the treatment by Meghan, uh, by the press, wasn't acceptable but and Daisy, that the press had to but, change. But Daisy, they did that once and the treatment continued and they stayed silent and they didn't say anything. And actually, it's got worse and worse and worse since then. And it's not until it's something to do with Prince William last week when they shut it down quicker than you could say exactly. Lady Susan Hussey. But when it comes to Meghan and when it comes to the treatment of her by the press, the racist headlines that are written, the palace stays silent and there's a reason for that. And it will be fascinating to see how the palace, if the palace reacts, right. you know, what the accusations are, how damaging they are and whether they do feel that they've got to react. I mean, I think react. the point about all of this, right, is that we, we, we've rehearsed all of these conversations before, so I'm not going to go back into whether the press is racist or not. I don't think it is. No, also, well, you can think that if you like. I've worked in it for a very long time. So have I, mate. I've worked in it for 20 years. Really? And, I, and I, yeah, I know the machine works, especially from yeah. the royal celebrity side of things. Well, you don't know it as press... well as I do. I can tell you that for a start. <laughs> OK. The bottom line is this. I've worked in it more recently in digital, the digital age. You worked in it in the print days. Yeah, it's no. It's a completely different game. No, I know make. No, I know exactly how the press treats members of the royal family. I know exactly how other people have been treated. I don't treated, know how the right? press treat people It's nothing to do with country. racism. But it's completely to do with racism. That's not what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say was, what do they think they're going to gain? by making this documentary, exactly what is it that they're right. after? Because it seems to me that all they're after, they're after is some kind of, of punishment. They're after their some, We've heard it already. With their own words. But, we've heard but, it all. This, no. is, this is the thing, is that, let me just say quickly, is that when Meghan and Harry wanted to be sort of one foot in and one foot out, be part-time royals and do some of their royal work, do the Invictus Games, thing they be, things they believed in, <clears> and also do some work for the royal family. I think if actually they'd been allowed to do that, none of this would have happened. We wouldn't have But why? What makes them so special? Nobody else does that. Exactly, why do they do it? Which is fine. But if the royal family wants to modernise, that could have been part of the modernisation and we wouldn't have gone down the road. But, Mike, actually, way. to say what makes them so special, it is a fatuous comment because you know what makes them so special. They were the most popular members of the royal family. They also gave a chance to the royal family to look modern, to look diverse, to look welcoming. They, they were it, a very which special it was case. When they got married, when they got married, that was exactly how they were viewed. That was exactly what And the, now what they're viewed as vile and vindictive, yeah, I think, exactly. by the vast majority exactly. of this country. By the vast majority. Well, and I think that part of that is their fault. We we can't all sit here and say that it's because of the press, it's because of this. The royal family have to own their part they in this. They have no right of reply. 
don't know. What, but they just... We just said about... But is any of this... Susan, do either of you think any of this is Harry and Meghan's fault? No, right? No. Yeah, no, no. So I, they're not I, at fault at that, all? That's not what I said. That's not, of course... Well, tell us why they're of course, at fault. of course there's some fault on their side. Really? Of course, yes, of course there is. And what do you think I, that is? I think that they could have handled some things differently to how they have handled them. Like but not I told a load of lies to Oprah. But what I, what, I, what, I, what I will not say is that... They are the ones who are completely at fault here. The royal family have not defended Meghan Markle when, in my opinion, in the opinion of millions of people they? around the world, they should have done because, why because it's their family. That's why. Exactly. Not when, 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 when Hussey says... When Hussey's, yeah, you know what, let's, let's agree to disagree. No.